It is the Sunday Deep Dive brought to you with great pleasure by our friends at Unique Wrought Iron where thousands of Australians go to make unique improvements to their homes each and every week. There are the doors. Go and look at them. Online now, Unique Wrought Iron. Hey, TJ, it's a massive game for both Carlton and the West Coast Eels today. The loser they may miss finals, particularly for Carlton. They lose, they are done, but West Coast have to win this, but plenty of injuries. But I wanted to go back to the rivalry and the history between these two clubs, and one of the great home and away games was 1995. Carlton and the West Coast Eels, it was round 21. Carlton win by one point. But watch this hit, Bill. Watch this hit, uh, Guy McKenna. Not this one, the next one. Earl Spalding. Watch this. Oh, no. Oh, one no. of the hardest hits that the game has ever seen. And uh, Guy play McKenna. Uh, you no know, free kick. Yeah, it was play on not in those days. But look at this, Peter Matera. We forget some of the superstars yeah. that played in these games. Hot afternoons at Subiaco Oval. Uh, or the uh, Wacker, sorry. Uh, magnificent well, games. And team, Carlton went on, yeah, won this game. Both teams were superb. And obviously, Dean Rice kicks Rice. that goal. David Parkin was the coach. Carlton win a game. And they only lost two games for the year. Yeah. So I knew when they won this game, I thought they were going to be home day, mate. Uh, that was yeah. a super team that year. And the team they lost to, I think, was it Fitzroy and Sydney in two consecutive weeks. weeks, weeks yeah. And big losses in that, in that year that otherwise was uh, close to perfect. And then won the grand final, they beat... Geelong, I think yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about this one? 1993, Chris Mainwaring. What a star he was. He's got to kick a goal here. Uh, Carlton are in front. He needs a goal to win. He goes around the corner and bang! Oh. Hits the top of the post. Carlton win by a point. That is back in 93. And they, uh, I think the next day in the paper it said a giant has awoken. Mm. It did, headline? Bill. It, it did. did. And they went on. 93 played in the grand final. Yeah. And then, of course, 95, they won it. So, well mm. done there to the Blue Baggers. Let's go back to 2014. The Blues won by three points, but the Eagles mm. hit the post a couple of times late. Um, and as you see there, the Blues go in front. I actually forget his name. What was his Menzel. Name? Menzel. 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 He was a good, classy player, wasn't yeah. he? But How can you forget now, Daniel Menzel? Now the West Coast Eagles oh, the hit the post a couple of times. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> Salwood hits the post. Oh, no. And then going back here, he's get off the ground, hits the post oh. again, and the Blues get up by three points. I uh, knew that. It was just trying to push it his brother. Uh, it, was, it was a big home and away game. And what about the individual performances? This is one of the great ones of all time. There's nothing like this ground. It was all Carlton supporters, uh, Bill. Yep. It was, uh, the year was round five, 1996. Cuda has had 35 disposals, 18 marks, 26 kicks and three Brownlow votes. They just couldn't get the ball past him. Whether he went back, whether he went forward, he was taking grabs oh, like this. Coot. And I've never seen a crowd in awe of a player like they were, Anthony Kutafidi. So it was one of the great individual performances. And this is the end. They're, tr they're, get they're coming the West Coast. There was only a kick in it. And, and Kuda does oh, this. Oh, Kuda. Did it all. That was his 18th mark for the day, Bill. That's when he was selling the kebabs too, though. The good <laughs> ads. Really good ads with those. Yeah, <laughs> what a freak. Uh, so from the experience to the young and Andrew Walker's first game, Lord, on debut in 2004. Have a listen, listen to these numbers in your first game. He had 26, three clearances, four tackles. He kicked a goal, he had five inside 50s and got a Brownlow vote. You oh. thought, who is this yeah. kid? He's sitting on people's heads, he's got speed, he's going to the centre bounce and doing this. So um, perhaps didn't quite reach the heights that we thought after this game. But speaking of Cooter, the one hand pick up the vision in yeah. game number one. He thought this could be, oh. kid could be anything oh. and then he had a crack at that one. One of the marks of all time, unfortunately he just dropped it. He missed that one, Kane, in his first game, but then put a, a career together of uh, highlights oh, when it comes to come big marks. Um, look, you, you talked last week, I think it was, Lord, about Jeremy Howe being the, the number one man over, over the journey, but this guy's highlights package is, uh, is right up there as well. Yeah, and as Kane said, I remember watching that first debut game yeah. and I thought, this guy is going to be one of the all time this the one. Yeah, injury let him down. Uh, mm. He was thrown around a fair bit in different <laughs> positions. But uh, Look at that. Yeah, he had a great career, Andrew Walker, TJ. Yeah, now uh, I want to go back to 1999. This was a semi-final <laughs> and uh, it was memorable for, a, uh, well, one for the comical and one for the emotional, I guess. Well, this was uh, Scotty Cummings, <laughs> oh, who was uh, actually dragged up the ground by Stephen Silvani and making a, a rare entry into the defensive zone. What did he do? He ran, ran too, too far. far. Ran too far. Yeah. Oh, Scotty. So watch what happens here, though. Oh, no. It rebounds, and uh, Scott Cummins there just thought to himself, I'm never, ever, ever venturing into oh, the no. back line again. So that was That's the... That's his opponent. That was the almost comical part. Uh, the emotional part was afterwards, because it was Mick Malthouse's final game as coach with the West Coast Eagles and you can see Glenn Jakovic uh, really emotional there with Mick who'd taken them to two premierships yeah. and for all his success in the West I don't think Mick was ever regarded as a, a West Australian 
I mean, he's a Victorian, but mm. I don't think they ever fully embraced Mick Malthouse for all that he did for West Australian mm. And yet uh, transformed that club into what it became, didn't he? Absolutely, Absolutely. he did. Yep. Absolutely. Now, in, in terms of the way he ran it off the field. Now, yep. we're about to put you all on the spot here because uh, one of the most famous trades of all time was Carlton won a Judd. But West Coast said, will you give us Josh Kendi, who they'd only just drafted a year earlier uh, with the pick number four in the draft. So look at what they've given both clubs. This is only Judd at Carlton. 145 games, 90 goals, whereas Kennedy's been able to play 248 for 658 goals. Obviously, Judd's four All-Australians at Carlton, three best and fairest. Really? Captain, he's a board member. He's done a lot for Carlton, whereas, obviously, Josh Kennedy, two Coleman, three All-Australians, three Glenn Denning. So they've both been superstars. So I want to know... Who won that trade? I know it's been mm. toing and froing, but I'm going to say in the end, Josh Kennedy has won that trade I'm, I'm at gonna, West Coast. I'm going to follow you in, Lord. For, for the longevity component to it as well, and, and the fact that every single player who's ever played the game says they play for one reason, and Kennedy achieved that, and, and Judd wasn't able to at, uh, at Carlton. Yeah, anyway. it's a good one. C, Judd, for me. Yep. Mm. But it's a tough one because you look at the Premiership um, and whether Juddy could have played for as long as Josh Kennedy, then it's Judd. But you'd have to think with the Premiership there, you'd just tick West Coast. I know. What's your there, thoughts? Yeah, well, there can be such thing as a win-win on a mm. trade. I think it's probably that. If I had to um, put a gun to my head, I think probably Josh Kennedy. I agree with you. All right. Well, for reasons not necessarily related to football whatsoever, I can't go with Judd. Um, so I'll be going with uh, <laughs> Kennedy. <laughs> oh. Great work, Lord.